Welcome to the jungle guys. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make these tall planters out of five fence pickets. So in my area fence picket is still $1.99 for a pine fence picket or if you'd like the cedar they are $3.99. So essentially you can make these tall planters for less than 10 bucks and now is the time to start doing this. And as always I will go through step by step in this video on exactly how to make these boxes a couple tips and tricks on how to make them quicker with jigs, things like that. But again, if you're the type of person that actually likes to have the plants in your hand, head over to the Etsy shop. I'll link it in the description and the plans will be there. So the last planters that we had made, they were more for the spring flowers and things like that. And that is still in. Those are still selling like crazy for people and they're still hot. But you need to be getting prepared for decorative items like ferns. Everyone loves these tall fern stands. And I've gotten a lot of requests to actually build one of these. So that's what I did. Took me a few different prototypes as always, but this is the design that I ended up with. So like I said, this will cost you around 10 bucks to build, but this is what the big box stores are selling these for. And this one is actually plastic. People are loving all of these different types of garden builds and outdoor builds. I get messages and photos every single day from people that are selling the heck out of them. So what I've started doing is actually screenshotting a lot of those photos and putting them into an album. So check some of these out. I'm loving the different twists that people are throwing into their builds, the different styles, and they're thinking outside of the box and doing their own thing. Some people are building them just for themselves or for family members, but others are selling tons of these things. I love seeing everyone's builds and what they have done with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an email address into the description. If you have a build that you'd like to share, drop it to me because I am starting a brag board. And it's not a brag board for me, it is a brag board for you guys. I have a bigger one on the way and I'm going to hang this in my shop on my wall. And as you guys are sending me photos of your builds, how you've grown with this channel, it's going on my board. That is what is going to keep me inspired to keep on doing these type of things. So if you have any photos, any brags, shoot them to me in the email in the description and periodically we'll be sharing them on the channel. Also, I've had a ton of people comment and ask me about a Patreon account. If I have one, I had no clue what Patreon even was. So I looked it up, I opened an account and I need your help. What would you like to see on a Patreon account? Do you want to see behind the scenes footage? Do you just want like a community chat type of thing where we can throw our pictures and our brags on there and kind of critique each other and help each other out and help each other to grow on this journey of creating our woodworking business? Let me know how you would like that to look. The link will be in the description for that as well. So as far as selling these planters, if you stage them up correctly, if you stage them up like I have them here and it does not take long, they will sell themselves. While I was making this, I was showing photos to some of my friends, you know, just you know, seeing what they thought, what I could tweak, what I could change, and they loved them. They all wanted them. So I'm sorry to all you builders out there, but whenever you start building these, you might as well make some extra ones for your family members and your friends because they are going to hit you up, I promise. As far as price point, you're gonna to have to do your homework, check out your area, see what they are going for. Had several comments on the other planters where people were selling them for around 45 to $50 a piece and they were selling tons. Check your area, but I know if they buy them anywhere else, they're going to be very expensive. And like we had discussed, set them up and show them what they can look like. Just like I have the ferns in here, you know, have some of those little twisty trees, whatever they're called. Don't know what they're called either, but have some of the little decorative twisty trees that, you know, people put on both sides of the doors. Have the little snowball type of things. Spend a little bit of extra money staging these things up. And then if you want to, whenever you get done selling that item, you can sell the tree and the planter together and more than get your money back. But you're building your portfolio. Take pictures of these items. Ask your customers to send you photos of the items once they get them in place at their house because you are building your portfolio. This is all part of it. And however you decide to sell these, be it on Facebook Marketplace, be it on just your Facebook page, these things will go nuts just on your Facebook page from your friends and your friend's family. Ask them to share, just like we spoke about in some of our earlier videos on how to get your name out. Show them what they cannot imagine. So most likely whenever you sell these in pine, you will not be selling them painted, but they need to see what it looks like painted and painted in different ways or stained. There was a lot of examples in the pictures that I just showed you where people got really creative with some different stains. Now I'm not saying that you have to build five or six different ones and actually paint them up different ways. 
There's other ways that you can do that, and I've actually done this with my prototype that I have over here to the left. So this was my prototype. This was the one that I allowed for all of my mess ups, and this is the designing stage. So since I am not going to be selling this one, I actually just played around with it with some different colors and different things like that, just to see what it would look like and to be able to show people what different looks that you could get with the same type of a planner. So on this side, I just have a different color scheme, okay? So I just painted the trim just to show people what they could do with it. And then on this side, I just reversed the paint. So you can do things like that without having to make several different ones. And I even went as far as making some trim just out of the scraps in a router if you wanted to go into that much detail. So the main point of this is just to show people that they can paint it to match their house, to match their decor. And if you're wondering about my swivel stand here, I actually took apart my stool that I normally sit on. I wanted something to swivel just to kind of show you guys all the different corners. And so that's why I'm standing for this video. So the way that this is designed, it tapers down and it will actually fit anything that is over 11 and a quarter inches wide at the top. So most of these planters that ferns and other flowers come in, come in a little bucket with a lip on it. It is designed to fit that. You can let them know that that lip will hold it in or their plants will come in something like this, okay? It's just a cheap little plastic thing and it will actually sit down and lip in as well. Or if you would like to add an extra step and actually add a floor in here somewhere, you can, but that is not needed. Why didn't anybody tell me I had two tape measures on? How long have I had two tape measures on? And when people see these in real life, they will be impressed, especially if they are staged up because like I said, they are tall. These are not small planters. These are not the planters that we had just finished building. I'm five foot 10 and these ferns come up to my chest. It all depends on how you decide to stage your items, but ferns are coming in and that is what I would suggest. We want to go with what is in, okay? So shiplap is in right now. And this is one of the easiest planters to make that I have done a video on. So let me show you how to make these tall five picket planters or fern stands, whatever you would like to call them. Make sure to smash that subscribe button if you'd like to see more builds like this. We have some larger builds coming, builds that are gonna be a little more intricate, still have the high profit and low cost aspect about them. So let's get started. Okay guys, so for this build, we're actually going to be using five fence pickets. And when you're getting your pickets, make sure that you're really getting the five eighths inch thick and the five and a half inch wide. Oftentimes these are random. They may vary a bit on thickness and width. It's not that big of a deal if the pickets are over five and a half inches wide because we can just square them up and that would actually be preferable. But oftentimes they are a little shy of five and a half. So just keep that in mind. Once you have everything ripped down to five and a half inches wide, then we're just going to sand our pickets like we did in the other videos. Like I said, oftentimes these things come a little bit furry, so we want to knock that off. For all angled parts in the cut list, they will be set at three degrees off of 90. So we're going to start by cutting all the parts that I have labeled sideboards in the description. Again, this is three degrees off of 90. We'll make our first three degree cut flip the board and then measure out our first part. And I've had a few questions about what pencil that I use. This is actually a drafting pencil. It has much thicker lead, a lot harder to break and you can still get that fine line. Well anyway, back to the cut. So since I'm gonna be cutting four of these at the same length, I'm actually gonna set up a stop. So in between each cut, that's all you have to do is flip the board over and then put it up against your stop, make another cut, perfect. So by doing this with all of your side boards, you can keep the saw at the exact same angle and still achieve the three degree taper that we need for them. And we're simply going to repeat this process for all of the parts labeled sideboard for this build. And now let's head over to the table saw and rip down the other parts that we need. Again, all the lengths and widths for this will be in the description. And here are our parts. Those are the side boards that we just finished tapering. We have our top and bottom boards. They are also on three degree offsets and I will show you how to cut those just here in a bit. And then we have our top trim. Those are 45 degree angles. And for this build, we're gonna be using an inch and a quarter deck screws. I'm using one inch brad nails and some exterior wood glue. And the long boards are our legs and I'm gonna to wait to cut those to size just here in a bit. I'll show you. But first, let's get everything out of our way and start getting our boxes assembled. That's what I'm going to call them. 
So basically each grouping of sideboards will create a stackable box. And we're just going to be using a butt joint for all of these. Really the only purpose of the bread nails is to hold this box in the place so we can handle it to finish this project. Now I'm going to show you something to be careful not to do. This is where I messed up on the first one. You see how the two outer boards are sandwiching in an inner board. We do not want that because the measurements will not line up in the end and this is what you'll get. Yeah. So let's take it apart and do it again. These little goof ups happen to everybody and it's part of learning. So let me show you the right way. Every board will be inset on one end and an outer board for the next piece. So as you can see, this board is going to be inset on the right side and it's going to be an outer board for the left. Now that looks better than our first one. So let's repeat this step for all of our remaining boxes. So with all of our boxes assembled, let's just make sure that everything is square. It looks good, so let's go ahead and join all of this together with glue. I'm just putting a thin layer between each box of exterior wood glue. I'm using Type Bond 3. It's actually made for exterior or interior, but I'm sure any wood glue would do just fine. Now for the legs. You can pre-cut these if you would like, but I like for the first one to actually be fitted in place. So what I'm pointing to is the inside tip of the leg. I've already put the three degree cut onto this board and we want to make sure that it is facing inward. So for cutting the legs, we are keeping the saw at the three degrees off 90. The only difference is, is we will not flip the board. We will slide it straight down. Even though I'm gonna be giving you the exact measurements in the description, I always like to leave my material a bit long in case I need to do a little trimming. You know the old saying, so once I have my first leg just the way that I want it, I'm actually gonna use it as a template. So now that you know that your length is exact, you can cut all of your parts labeled leg A and leg B. So with our legs cut, let's start with leg B. This is the smaller of the two legs and I'm just gonna line it up with the edge of our box. Now leg A, the wider of the two, will actually overlap leg B. And I'm just using the wood glue and the bread nails for now. Even though legs A will both be on the same side of the box, it's easier to install legs B first. Since legs A overlap leg B, this allows for adjustment if needed. Again, the bread nails are just gonna be used to hold the box's form until we can get our screws in. Another quick tip, the little knob on the end of your bread nailer, if you turn it away from you, you will not get blasted in the face with air. Just thought I'd throw that in there. And now we're just going to repeat these steps for the rest of our legs. All right, so with that done, it's time to put our top and bottom boards on. So the top and bottom boards are cut the same way as we cut our side boards. Use the lengths that I put in the description or you can leave them a little bit longer and trim them to fit. And since these are non-weight bearing and basically just a decorative part, I will only be using the wood glue and the bread nails. And since the legs will most likely be weight bearing, I'm gonna go ahead and tie everything together using screws. And again, we're gonna be using an inch and one quarter deck screws. Starting one inch from the bottom, I'm spacing my screws six inches apart. And from the sides, they'll be one inch in. And you know me, I love jigs. So instead of repeating these measurements eight different times, I can do it one time on this jig that I've made that has that three degree angle already cut onto the bottom. Now this is not a necessity for this build, but it will make it go much faster. Okay, so I'm being attacked here. So time to introduce the shop dog. This is Dex. You've probably seen him running around in the background in a few of my other videos, but he wanted to say hi. All right, Dex, time to get back to work. So with our jig made up, that's all we have to do is just line it up with the edge of our box, use that as our pre-drill guide, and simply flip it over to do the opposite side. 
and once everything is pre-drilled we will go ahead and place our exterior deck screws. Okay so now it's time for the top trim. This thing's getting pretty tall so let's bring this down a notch. Let's work off the ground. The length for this part that I've put in the description will be for tip to tip measurement. Again this is on 45 degree angle. Like I said before I like to keep these just a bit long in case I need to do a little bit of trimming. But essentially we are lining up the inside of these boards flush with the inside of this box. And as before, a little bit of wood glue, bread nails, trim that last piece, and we're ready for some screws. For screw placement, I'm putting these 3 8 of an inch in, that way they can actually drill into the walls of this. I want my outside screws to be 1 inch from the edge, and then the center screw centered. And you guessed it, I'm going to make a jig for this. I'm actually going to use my old jig. I'm just going to outline this part onto the back side of this, put those measurements in, and use this as my drill guide. Throw some screws in there, a little bit of sanding just to finish things up, and we're ready to rock. And there you have it. And who would have dreamed that you could make this planter box using only five fence pickets and... Ultimately, you can do it for 10 bucks. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you were able to take something away from that video and actually build upon that. That is the name of the game. Take this idea, build on it, put your signature to it, put your own twist, build your portfolio, get your name out there. We've talked about all of these different types of things. This channel is exploding and you guys are the reason for that. So let's keep that up. People are getting creative and they're thinking outside of the box and that has caught a lot of attention. Again, if you have something that you're proud of, throw it in the email and we'll add it to the brag board. I love seeing this stuff and I love seeing people taking that step, getting out of their comfort zone, pushing fear of failure aside and making money. And that is one of the points of this channel besides education is to make money with woodworking. So build some of these planter boxes and make that high profit, low cost money. Till next time guys, see ya. Welcome to the jungle. Well, welcome to the jungle guys. So let me how to show you how to show you. Welcome to the jungle, guy. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle, guy. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle, guys.